So we are going to create uh, a new app for our MBC Music Store. So I've launched Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. C Sharp is the language, and I want to limit here to MVC. And I'm going to choose ASP.NET, .NET Framework. The name of the application is going to be MVC Music Store Code First. And I'm going to go ahead and save it with my repos. And then I'm going to place the solution and the and project in the same directory. And for this, we're just going to select MVC and hit create. And we are going to be creating four models. And I've got the code for you. So we're going to add a class. And the first one we're going to call album. And then the code that I'm giving you, there's a link, and you're going to select it. And then you can just copy all of the code. Here's the link. I'm going to copy it. And then we're just going to paste it right in here. And this is assuming that the name of your project is MVC Music Store Code First, spelled this way. So let me save that. And it's kind of flag and genre and artist because we haven't added those yet. So let's go ahead and add those. Our next one is going to be artist. And again, I have some code. Let's open up that. Not a whole lot to this one. I'm gonna copy it. And then let's paste it right over the top. And you can see artist ID is going to be our primary key. We're using the convention there. And then if we look over at album, you can see album ID is the key. And we are connecting album to artist. One artist can have many albums. So this is the one in the relationship. And let's do a little save all. And now we're going to add genre. And again, I have some code for you to copy. And genre ID is our primary key. And you can see that it's related here to albums. And let's save that. Uh, a single album is going to have one genre, but a genre can be used on many albums. So there can be many rock albums and there can be many country albums, that type of thing. Okay, so at this point, genre and artist are related over here in album. Now, the last one we're going to do is order. And again, I have some code for you.
And this code does have some annotation in it. So let's save it and we'll take a quick peek at it. Uh, we've got order ID, which is our primary key. So all of our classes are using that convention of class name followed by ID for primary key. And then you can see we've got first name and last name. Uh, they have lengths and they are required. And then we get down here to email, uh, which is also required. And we've got a little regular expression that is validating it. And then we have a total for their order, which uh, we're also indicating uh, is a number with decimal places. And we are having a range. Uh, for the total. Okay, so at this point, we have our models created. And make sure you save everything because we are running a build. Next step is to add Entity Framework. So basically we need to install it. Uh, I think last time we used the console for installation, but you can also just go into uh, the NuGet packages and you can install it this way. So this would not be under installed. Let us browse for entity. And this is the one we want. Let me get rid of that box so you can see more of this. This is the one we're using. We're not using the core. Okay, and we're using uh, Entity Framework 6. So that is what you need to install. Okay, and it should come back with that it's finished and we don't have any errors. Okay, so we're gonna close out of that. And at this point, we are ready for our data access layer. So I'm gonna right click up here on my solution name and I'm gonna to go to new or add and new folder. And we're gonna call this DAL and that stands for data access layer. And then we are going to right click on that. And we're going to add our context class. So we're going to go to add and class. And we are going to call this music store db.cs. And I do have some code for this as well. Okay, and remember, uh, we just talked about the context class, <laughs> um, but uh, the context class is basically using dbset to define the tables that we're going to have in our database. So let us copy this. And I'm going to paste it right over everything. And let me save that. And we're going to go ahead and run a build on this. And then we are going to do our initializer class. And for those of you that indicated uh, what your favorite band was and favorite album, I did add you to the initializer.
important that you spell these right. All right. And again, I do have a file for you. And we're going to copy everything that's in here. Paste it over this. And let's save everything. And we're going to run another build. Oops, let me move this over. Do another little save here. And that code that we were looking at earlier, uh, where it does the add and then saves the changes, you can actually see that in here. So at this point, we are ready to modify web config. Now, this is the web config that is in the root folder. So we're going to double click on that. It should be like one of the very last things that you see in the solution explorer. Right above app settings is where we put our connection string. And I do have the connection string in here so you can copy it. Uh, basically the name of our database is going to be music store DB. Uh, the connection string, it's just telling it that we're using the local database. Uh, the name of the database is music store DB1. Okay, and so you just copy this. And we're going to paste it at the top of the file right above app settings. So here's app settings. And now we are at the top of the file. You know, and if you want to spread this out on a couple of lines, you can. Spacing in here is kind of up to you. And let me save. And we'll come back out here. So that's our first change. And then our second change, and we'll just run a build once we're all done here, uh, is to add the context information. And so this goes at the bottom of web config, right below the entity framework opening tag. So let's copy that. And we'll scroll all the way to the bottom, and there's the Entity Framework opening tag. And here we're adding our contexts. So this is basically saying that the name of the application is MVC Music Store Code First, uh, and the database context is in the DAL folder. And then we're also telling it that we have an initializer that is located also in the DAL folder, and this is the name. Okay, this is the name of our context. This is the name of the initializer. And if you named yours differently, you do need to adjust that code. Uh, what follows is just the name of the application. So I'm gonna save this, and we are gonna run a build. So now for the fun part. Uh, we are going to generate our controllers and views. So let me close out of some of these. I certainly don't need all of them open. And so what we're going to do is right click on controller. Going to go to add. 
And we can either pick controller or new scaffolded item because they take us to the same place. So if we pick controller and then we pick MVC5 controller with views using entity framework, it takes us into here. And if we do, oh, let me try it again. New scaffolded item. And we do MVC5 controller uh, with views using entity framework. It takes us to the same place. So there's basically two ways of getting here. Uh, and if you remember from the last couple times you did this, First thing you have to do is select your model class. So we'll start with album. And then we have to tell it what our DB context is. And we're gonna keep all of the check marks here. And if you remember by default, it does pluralize the classes in the controller name. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and let it pluralize and we'll click on add. And so what it's doing right now is it's generating the controller and all of the views for albums. And so once it's done, uh, you're probably gonna be able to see your controller. And then we're gonna do the same thing. And either you can pick controller or new scaffolded item, doesn't matter which one, but you want MVC5 controller with views using entity framework. And now that we've done album, we'll go ahead and do artist. Context is the same, all the check marks on. We're gonna allow it to pluralize and click on add. And we're gonna do another one. We got two more. And so we've done album and artist. Now we're going to do genre. And then once that do that's done, we're gonna go ahead and do order. And I'm switching among those commands just to show you that it doesn't make any difference which one you choose. So at this point, uh, we have all of our controllers and views generated, and we still need to modify our layout. And I do have some code here for you. If you pluralized the controllers, then you can pretty much just copy this code. And we can go into layout. And then we can paste it right in here. And let me save and we'll go ahead and run a build. And we should be able to run this. And let me pull this over here. Okay, so you can see there's some customizing that we would need to do to this. 
And let's click on one that uses a table. Okay, and then we'll just kind of check out our CRUD functions, make sure they work. Let's look at our recording artists. And this is not filled in uh, basically because I didn't do an initializer for it. So in order to test this, Just quick add something here. And basically I'm making up data just in case you're curious. Okay, so you can see that all of that information was added. I should be able to edit. If you remember, we had a range on the total. So if I go above the range, it shouldn't let me do that. Yep, that's what I thought. And if I wanted to delete it, I could. Okay, so uh, this does seem to be working. At this point, you are done with this, uh, but you will have an extra credit opportunity to kind of uh, fix this up and make it look a little fancier. Okay, And I will explain that when we get into our uh, assignment that you're gonna work on on your own.